So, let's continue this batch rendering party. Last time we took a look at what batch rendering actually was, we did a bit of theory and put together a basic example of just rendering two squares. Check out that video if you missed it. And today we're gonna to continue on with kind of filling in the blanks of what we could do with traditional rendering, which we can't do with batch rendering, and kind of bringing all of those features, I guess, back into it. So last time we did just draw two white quads, two white squares. And that was fine, obviously, but eventually you're probably gonna to wanna to do other things. For example, draw quads of different colors or draw textured quads or dynamically change the quads that are being drawn, all of those things. And that's exactly what this mini series is about. We're kind of going through everything step by step, breaking it down, doing it in a really kind of simple way, and then filling in everything that we would want to actually achieve with batch rendering. So today, that's gonna to be all about color. How do we draw two quads of different colors, or in fact, any number of quads with different colors? Traditionally, when we want to draw a colored quad, if you think about like the, 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 the most simplest way, I mean, the simplest way is probably quite subjective. Something that might be simple to me might not be simple to you. You might think something else is simple. But when I think of like, let's just render a quad, a colored quad, a flat colored quad in the most basic way possible. What I think of is simply filling in a vertex buffer with the vertex positions and then rendering that quad and then in the fragment shader, passing in some kind of uniform variable which contains the color. Of course, we could just hard code the fragment shader to be a particular color, but that wouldn't really be useful if we have two different quads, we'd have to write two different shaders or something like that. Instead of that, what we would do is just render our quad twice using two different draw calls, but then have a uniform like VEC4 or VEC3 color inside our fragment shader, which we would set the output color to be, and then that, would actually be kind of set up before the draw call happens. So I can just use like GL uniform 3F or GL uniform 4F and actually set those variables before drawing my quad, before actually calling GL draw elements. That's kind of, to me, what would be the, the simplest way of rendering a quad. However, we can't do that anymore. And the reason we can't do that anymore is because we just have one draw call. We can't call GL uniform 4F, then GL draw elements, and then call GL uniform 4F again, and then draw elements, because we're just, we, we only have one elements call. We only have one draw elements call. So we can't set the uniform to be two different values between draws. What do we do? Now, there are a number of solutions to this. You, that's, I mean, you could have like an array of color values and you could kind of pass in the index and like, there's a lot of different things you could do, some of them better than others. But the way that we're gonna solve it in this video is what I think is probably the best way to solve it. I mean, subjectively, of course, just my opinion, no need to get mad. And that is by using vertex colors. Now you may have heard of vertex colors before. So let's just talk a little bit about what that actually means. Currently our vertex simply contains a position. So every vertex just has three floats, X, Y, Z, and that defines the position of that vertex. But positions are not the only things that vertices are capable of containing. And in fact, vertex and vertex position is often used interchangeably, which isn't exactly correct. For example, someone might refer to the vertices of an object and really be talking about the vertex positions of an object. However, the word vertex and what it actually means in graphics programming is simply a point which can contain as much data as you really want it to do. You could store absolutely anything inside a vertex and then access that data inside your vertex shader. So that's what we're gonna do today. Every single vertex that we actually have inside our vertex buffer is going to contain a color. And then we're gonna access that color from within the vertex buffer inside our vertex shader, pass it to the fragment shader, and then set that as our output color. So since each vertex now contains a color, Obviously, every quad has the ability to be any color we set it to. And in fact, it's even finer grain than that. We can actually control the color of every vertex, thus creating like a gradient or something like that, if we would want to do that, just relying on the interpolation between the vertex and the fragment shaders. But anyway, that's a story for another day. So to break this down, all we're gonna do today is just open up our vertex buffer and just add a color into every vertex and then access that inside our shader and set that as our output color. It's as simple as that. There's no need to complicate things. Let's dive into the code and take a look. So at the moment, we have these two white squares from the previous video. Let's give them some color. Let's come over here to our vertex buffer, which currently contains just the vertex positions of these two squares, and let's add some colors here, maybe like a blue and a yellow. So for this first quad, let's make it a nice blue color. We'll add the values here, red, green, blue, and alpha. Now this gives us a color for this vertex, but since we want the entire quad to be one solid color, 
we'll need to copy this color across all of these four vertices which make up our square. Now let's come down here to our second quad and we'll make it a nice yellow color. I'll add in the RGBA values for all of the vertices which make up that second square. And that's it, we have our two squares where the first three floats of each vertex are the X, Y, Z position of that vertex. And then the next four floats of each vertex are the RGBA color values. And that's it, that's all of our data. Going down here, the only thing I need to change is the vertex attribute declarations we have here, since we changed our vertex buffer layout. What we're doing here is treating the first attribute, attribute zero, as the position. And we don't wanna change that, but what we wanna do is add another attribute which is going to be index one, and that's gonna be our color. It's gonna be four floats, RGBA. And then the other thing that changes here is the stride. The stride is how many bytes a complete vertex is. So here we have seven floats per vertex, so we can just change both of these to seven. And finally, this is the offset of that attribute, which starts at the fourth float of our vertex. So if this is our vertex, what is the size of these three floats? Three floats are 12 bytes, so we can just write in 12 and cast it into a const void pointer because that's what the API wants. And that's it, that's all we have to do C++ side. Then we just render it as usual. We've got those colors in the vertex buffer. So now what we need to do is modify our shader so that it will use these vertex colors. At the moment, we've just got this layout location equals zero vec3 position, which is the position of our vertex. And what we need is another one of these, but at location one because index one is what we set our attribute to be. And this is going to be our VEC4 color. Now a color isn't very useful in a vertex shader. What we want to do is use this color to shade all of our pixels with. So we need it in our fragment shader. The way we do that is create this output color variable. I'll call it V underscore color, V for varying, which is what these variables used to be called. And we'll set it equal to a color, just like that. And then inside the fragment shader, I'm gonna take in that V color variable and then I'll set our output color to be that V color. And that's it. Now let's launch this and see what we get. And there we go, we have our beautiful colors. Shout out to my Ukrainian fans here with these colors. But anyway, that's what we do to set different colors for our quads, even though they're batched together into a single draw. So yeah, as I mentioned, super simple stuff. Vertex colors are used not just for quads or 2D rendering, but also for 3D rendering. For example, we don't necessarily need to render a 3D model with a texture if we just want that 3D model to be like a solid color or different sub models, kind of sub meshes within that model to be different colors or something like that. If we're going with something like a low poly style game or something that just doesn't need textures and textures and stuff like that, something that can just rely on colors. So vertex colors are definitely widely used, not just for 2D rendering, keep that in mind. But in this case, they're really, really useful and a very easy, quick way to set up the color of each quad if we're dealing with like a batched kind of scenario like we are with batch rendering. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that like button and also leave a comment with your thoughts below. Also, I do have a Patreon, patreon.com forward slash the channel. Huge thank you to everyone who supports me on Patreon because you are what make these kinds of videos possible. Next time, we're gonna be talking about textures. So we've covered colors and that's great, but what if I want each of my quads to be a different texture? So maybe I'm rendering a tile map and I need water tiles, grass tiles. Maybe I'm rendering a label with text and I need each quad to be a different character. How do I do all of that? How do we deal with different textures inside a batched scenario? We're gonna talk about that next time. I will see you then, goodbye.